Five, four, three, two, one. Good morning. It looks like a fake background. Good morning, guys. Huh? You know how people have the green screen? Why oh. is that? That's weird. I don't know. Maybe the lighting. That's creepy. Good morning. How you guys doing? Good? Yeah. Put some cinnamon in your coffee. It tastes pretty good. That's old school. Um, I can that, use some coffee. <laughs> as you um we didn't do a, a devotional after bible study yesterday yeah we actually stayed kind of really late yeah. we were with al and lydia i didn't go have my anniversary all i did during the whole bible study is talk about having ice cream for my anniversary and by the time we got out it was kind of late and so i don't think anywhere was really open for yeah yeah. So, so, no ice cream. We've been working on the church, as you know, um, all week. Yeah. Did we work out here Monday? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every day. Well, it ain't Thursday yet. Oh, yeah, today's Thursday. Yes. So yeah. Tomorrow will be Friday. We're Friday for them, and it's Thursday for us today. But as you can see, things are looking more... This, was, this place looked like a tornado hit it. Yeah. All week, um, things are finally getting put in place. My arms hurt. You guys. The office. Oh, I can f flip the camera to show them how that looks real quick. Oh, well. It's kind of messy still, but check this out. Let me. Oh. Yeah. We finally finished painting. They we painted the, the office. We haven't set nothing up yet. But so we're actually facing the office and. Um, <coughs> That room in the back right there is now the storage, but there's shelves and everything's really neat. And uh, this room here, that one is the one that um, um, the sheetrock is finally put inside so we can get paint on it. We have, we're going to do the flooring. Um, we added more lights on those. See the purple lights up here? And uh, the drum set. So if you know a drummer. And wants to play House of Rest. Or a bass player or a guitar. We set the keyboard up, see behind me? Yeah. Right there. Or a keyboardist or you wanna Yeah. But anyhow. Yeah, so we've just been doing a lot of stuff and uh I, I wanna thank a few people. Yeah. Um Brother Tomas, who's been here every single day. Um You rock brother doing stuff um uh brother johnny and his wife diana you both rock you guys he's been here um both have been here then she wasn't here today and then she showed up with dinner she surprised us with some is some, it is it no little, i don't think so oh. she surprised us with some uh chile rellenos yeah some chile rellenos today yeah. she she posted it on facebook what she was making her husband for dinner and we're like, you know, it's funny because I posted a, a chip. <laughs> and next thing you know, within not even half an hour or so, she's surprising us over here with dinner. Full dinner. <coughs> warm tortillas and everything. Everything warm. And I was just like, OMG. She, we were able to set up a table. She had brought, was bringing dinner for her husband and then she brought us some dinner um, thank you so much. And then Melodia showed up to help me. Yeah, she helped today. She helped me um, with the prison ministry, which was such a blessing because I had a lot of stuff to fold. Um, I was able to show her um, sort of, you know, a little bit of how I'm We need I'm to bring working. the folding machine. Yeah, it was how I worked the, the system for, uh, you know, the, the prison ministry. We had some problems with, you know, the... The envelope you know so printing weird. envelopes yeah so i have to go take it back home and i need to print the envelopes at home i'm just too tired to do it tonight though it's already you guys it's 11 o'clock almost right now i've been up since 5 30 this morning i'm just i'm i'm tired and last night you guys we we were just you know just tired but um it's been a blessing i want to um Man, see, I forgot the name already. 
it was I forgot the name. I'll have to wait till tomorrow. I don't know what you're talking about. I know. You're not gonna know that I'll just uh. wait till tomorrow. But um I just wanna There ain't wait. no devotional tomorrow. This is Friday's devotional. Oh man. Oh man. Come on, man. Then I'll wait till Monday. Okay, yeah. but anyways, um but I do wanna I wanna thank um everybody for, for their help though. It's been a blessing. Mm -hmm. It really, really has. Yeah. It's been really cool. So it's it's getting these are like the last things, like I said in the video. I don't want to repeat it again, but a lot of the last things that we never got to get to. You know, and we're getting a lot of a huge part of it done. And um so anyways, before it gets any later, I did want to talk about some scripture in the book of Philippians. Philippians uh, dos. Yeah, Philippians is a city called the city of Philippi. And um, Paul uh, started a group there, a church there, and he's writing a letter to them. Uh, and that's what we're going to read here. In Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 19, right? Yes, 19 to 24. Yeah, I'm going to um, read it. She's going to read it in the message, and then we're going to talk about some of the context of it and, and get into it. Uh, but it says this, Philippians chapter 2, 19. It says, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character, that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Therefore, I hope to send him at once, as soon as I see how it goes with me. 24, right? Mm -hmm. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. Okay, and in the message it says, I plan, according to Jesus' plan, to send Timothy to you very soon so he can bring back all the news of you he can gather. Oh, how... That will do my heart good. I have no one quite like Timothy. He is loyal and genuinely concerned for you. Most people around here are looking out for themselves with little concern for the things of Jesus. But you know yourselves that Timothy the real th is the real thing. He's been a devoted son to me as together we've delivered the message. As soon as I see how things are going to fall out for me here, I plan to send him off. And then I'm hoping and praying to be right on his heels. Yeah. You know, I like it because a lot of people don't realize that these are just literally letters. You think of the Bible, and it's like it's literally a letter from Paul to, to the church in Philippi. And he's talking about Timothy. Mm -hmm. Timothy was like not on, more than a student. He was like a son, his son, you know, because Paul was an older man. Timothy was young. A matter of fact, it was Timothy that took on the torch of Paul when, once Paul was beheaded. Mm -hmm. You know, and anyways, the, the reason this passage jumped out at me. It's almost like an announcement he was making. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, one thing that jumps out at me um, is sometimes it's hard. It's hard to delegate things, you know. Because everybody has their own life. You know, everybody has their own things that are going on. And, and here Paul was like, man, there's nobody like him. Like, we're like-minded and he's going to get things done. I know I can trust him. You know, but the very fact that he brings it up lets me know. It actually gives me comfort because that meant, that meant to me that it was hard for Paul to find people that he can count on. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes, you know... You guys, maybe you feel like you can't count on somebody. And and sometimes we feel like we can't count on, on people sometimes. And it's hard. And, and it's not even, I'm not even talking negatively. I'm just saying people have their own life. Everybody has their own life. And we understand that. Yeah, yeah, we get it. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, to to take on something like this and and have, you know, I don't know how much church family we have here collectively i'm not saying everybody comes every sunday i don't know over a hundred people you know and, and it's really hard to okay i'll put it this way 
when I remember one time Sharon said, you know, when can we reach the point, when can we have the point where we could go um, visit a church on a Sunday for you can preach at? Can't do it because there's no one here to work the sound, work the live stream, get everything going. And that's really hard, you know. And um, and God forbid, what if something happened? What if something happened to me on a Sunday and some, or something happened to you on a Sunday? Um, it gets hard, you yeah. know. And um, so I, I, I feel Paul. And Paul goes, man, you know, I like how he says, um, you know his proven character. He's like a son, you know, as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. But before that, he says, everyone seeks their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. Now that right there is a problem that he was saying. Because he was like, not he wasn't just saying, man, everybody's busy. He was saying, everybody that I know is all about themselves. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not about Jesus. You know, and, and I was having a conversation um, earlier today. And I was telling the brother, you know, I was just like, you know, I hope people don't think. Because Sharon and I, we don't intermingle a whole lot with a lot of the ministries in town. You know, and um, there's some that I'm like, man, praise God, they're busy. And there's some that, that, I don't know, you know, and it's like, it's really hard because we are trying to, to not spread ourselves thin. To me, sometimes I, I feel like, man, if, if we're here and we're there and here, there, how can we truly pour into, because you can't pour into the world. You can't pour into all of Modesto or whatever city you're from. It's hard enough to pour into the people that come here, you know, and I would never want to spread myself thin. Would you want to spread yourself thin like that? It, well, it... No, and I think, well, here's the thing. I think that people have the perception that um, that this is our only ministry, but it's not. We have a larger ministry. We have an online ministry. We have this ministry. It's Our family is a big well, even family. Before that, for, for before that, our family is a ministry. Yeah. Our well, children, our, our, children, our, our grandchildren. Family, we have our church family. We have our online family we have a big ministry mm -hmm. you know and we thank god we're yes amen you know and the thing is is that it's not the type of ministry where we just you guys are just there and you're you're just it's not it's not just one-sided we're we're just on this side and we're ministering and we don't have a relationship the thing is, is that we do have a relationship. Mm -hmm. We talk to you guys. We know you guys. And some of you, we have gotten to know your families. We talk to you guys. We call you. Um, we visit. We spend the night at people's houses. We, You guys come to our home. We, we break bread together. And, you know, not everybody knows this. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and first of all, nobody said anything. We're just conversating because of what the scripture yeah, says. Yeah, because so, of what scripture says. Yeah, so yeah, because yeah. of that, you know, and, and that's why what, what we're trying to say is that, when, well, you just said, you know, about, you know, spreading ourselves thin. But the thing, is, the, what I'm trying to say is that it's not that... Well, what is it that I'm trying to say? <laughs> I don't know. It's 11 o'clock at I night. Know. But man, but what I'm trying to say is that I believe that, you know, we really don't even have the time to spread ourselves thin because we are pretty much yeah, kind of busy. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> you know cause like, I, I started, minute, where am I? <laughs> well, as we're talking, I started thinking, I hope nobody thinks that, yeah, no, no, that no, no, other no. ministries are talking about us. No, no, that's, that's, that's not even the point. I'm like, you wait know? a minute, where am I going with this? I think I was just talking to, <laughs> yeah. to a brother because... He knows a lot of people that minister everywhere and I was asking him I'm like brother do you do you do you feel like we are withdrawn from things and he goes no no he goes I like what you guys do and mm -hmm. you know and that's just that was the conversation and 
It reminded me. It did remind me. And and um, I think I heard you. I think I heard you ask that. I think I heard you ask yeah. that. Yeah, but it did. This this conversation did remind me of something. I don't know if I've ever shared about a situation in prison. And um, what happened was, by the I was two years into Christ, and I was sent to Terminal Island, which is in Long Beach. There's a couple thousand inmates there. It's a it's a big big prison, and. Um, I, actually, you know, I heard Al Capone was there before he went to Alcatraz. Oh, really? Yeah. Anyways, um, I'm a teacher, man. I'm a teacher, you know, and I had been in solitary, and I learned and learned. I was just, like, soaking this up. Like, it was just like this. Imagine this pouring onto me, and I'm a sponge. And I was soaking and soaking and soaking and soaking with nobody to share it with other than my parents because I would write sermons to my parents. And uh, so when I finally went to Terminal Island... Um, I didn't realize how a lot of the believers there didn't even know their words. So I took it upon myself to, I would, have, I would give Bible studies all day long, other than the job that I was assigned to, because every inmate is assigned a job. But other than that, I literally had somebody, I'd meet them at seven in the morning because breakfast was earlier than that. Boom, we're going to meet by this bench. We're going to have a Bible study until next movement. And then I'd go back to my unit or my job, I don't remember. Anyways, my whole day was scattered with Bible studies with different individuals. You know, uh, some of them were Old Testament, some of them were New Testament, some were just different things. Anyways, the brothers I was hanging around with, um, on every other Saturday, they would evangelize in the in the prison yard. Everybody's out. There's a few thousand inmates walking around, playing basketball, playing handball on the weight pile, walking the track. All of, and, and so what they would do is they said, hey, we would pray and then we evangelize and then we come back and pray again. So they would break off into twos to talk to different inmates. I never went, guys. <laughs> I never went. I never showed up. Uh, usually when they did it, honestly, I was in my unit probably eating spread. Uh, but they considered me a leader. So anyways, word got around to me by the leader of our group. His name was Mario. And he goes, Brother David, he goes, I need to sit down with you and talk with you. I said, okay, what's going on? He goes, well, he goes, the brothers are feeling a certain kind of way about you because every time we come out to evangelize, you never come. You know, and I said, I'm not an evangelist. <laughs> so I told him, I'm not an evangelist. You know, so I said, you know what, let me, I'll, I'll talk to the whole group when we're together. So then I talked to the whole group. I'm not trying to make this story long. I know it's late and we're tired. But anyways, I talked to the whole group. And everybody was friendly. Nobody was angry at me. They just were confused why I wouldn't go to evangelize. Anyways, I sat in the group and I said, hey, guys. I said, I understand that you're feeling a certain kind of way. I said, first of all, um, I'm not an evangelist. Second of all, um, you guys come out here twice a month to evangelize for one hour. How many of you guys are giving Bible studies to different individuals all day long, all week long? I said, because this guy does. I Did said, that's all. This guy? Yeah, I was just joking. <laughs> but I said, that's all I do. I said, I'm pouring into... <laughs> 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 Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's a meme that I use a lot. This guy. You know, I, I told him literally, I said, seven in the morning, I'm up after breakfast giving a Bible study to this brother. In this hour, I'm giving a Bible study to three brothers. That's so and so. I said that's all I do, all day long. So you know what? On a Saturday, when you guys are out, I'm in my bunk reading and eating spread, because I've been working every single day for the gospel. You know. So, uh, anyways, I say that. I, think, I uh -huh. think everybody. I think everybody has um, their different callings. Everything. Yeah. Everybody has their different. You know. I think earlier today, you know, I, I had told you that on Thursdays I'd like to come for, for prayer, you know, and I was really happy that we happened to be here, you know, today doing that because I stopped sanding. I was out there sanding the table and, you know, doing painting and, and distressing the table. And I stopped because prayer was taking place at 630 and I went out there for prayer time mm -hmm. when everybody got here and... As soon as prayer was over, I came back to sanding the table. You know, I was all full of dust and everything, but I went out there just for prayer. Um, but 
I knew that I, I told myself that I wanted to be here for prayer. So I stopped what I was doing for that moment being and went out there a bit. I didn't expect you to stop what you were doing because, you know, this is something where it, that it, it's my heart. It's what I want to do, yeah. you know. So I think it's important that everybody, I, I believe that everybody has their moment and, and their place to be with with the Lord, you yeah. know. I'm sure there's. Uh, um, people that are that know the word have so much to pour out, but they don't know how to public speak. But they write books and they're authors. Yeah, they could be completely introvert. And I would never be like, well, real Christians are extrovert. Real Christians get a bullhorn and be on the street corner. All you do is write Christian books, dude. You know how hard it is to write a book. Hmm. Do you know how hard it is? You know, it's it's not an easy thing, and that's that person's ministry. They might never publicly speak. But my God, will they have the Holy Ghost pour out when they write and type on, on a computer to, to author a book? Yeah. You know, so there's different ways and different yeah. things. But, yeah. you know, but I love this where he says, everyone seeks their own. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. He says, but you know his proven character, man, that this Timothy, this guy I'm pouring into, this young man, I can count on him. If I ask him to do something... He's going to do it with excellence, you know, and, and I think that that I think the Lord sees us like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the Lord sees us like that because, man, the Lord knows um, our budget here at the church, our lack of budget. But look at this. You know, I'm proud of this this little warehouse, man. Me too. I'm so proud of cute. this, you know, and and. And that's another thing I was talking to the brother because, you know, he, he's been to a lot of churches. And I said, brother, I have a question. Um, how are some of the other churches? You know, because a lot of them are smaller ones. You know, he goes, no, no, they're old school. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're cool. They're cool, you know. He goes, but none of them are like this. You know, and, and it's like, I'm not saying like, oh, look at our church. But I'm saying this is that, I, you know what I told him? I said, you know why? Because I have a wife that, that likes things to look nice. You know, I mean, honestly, I had this building, guys, before when I first started House of Rest. And it was literally a stage, a fold-up stage, and a sound system. That's it. Well, one thing, I, I had no money to do anything to it. But second, I didn't have a share in here. Yeah. You know? And um, I just, you know, he and I love the. the I brother, love wood, guys. <laughs> I love what the brother said. Is he goes, it's comfortable here. And you know what else? Mm -hmm. We don't have a Tomas. We didn't have a Tomas oh, back before? then. I know. Yeah. And you know what? And and it's like we have the ideas. We draw them out, and we're like, okay, Tomas, this is what we want. Mm -hmm. And there he comes. Yeah. And, yeah. So we have the help. We have the people that can take the ideas that we have mm -hmm. and be like, you know what? This is my vision. This is what I would love. Um, this is my style. Can you make this happen mm -hmm. with what we have? You know, and we go and we Facebook market everything and we we have vision and everything. And, and he's like, I can make that happen. Mm hmm and they go and they do it. Remember the um, La Bamba movie? Yeah. And um, there's a, um, when Richie goes to, he got invited to play with this band in the garage that are practicing, they're jamming. Mm -hmm. And he walks in with this old rickety amplifier. And the guy, the lead singer, he goes, huh, that looks like you found that in the garbage can. And he goes, yeah, well, it's mine now. <laughs> Basically, he did take it out of a garbage can. But, Man, did he make music with it? Mm. You know, and sometimes everything here might not be brand new, but to us it is. Yeah, it is. You know, and and um, it's just a beautiful thing, man. Because uh, can you read it there real quick in the twenty one before we finish, or is it all bunched up? Right here it says. Um, Most people around here are looking. Yeah. Most people around here are looking out for themselves with little concern for the things of Jesus. Right there. And I'm just like, my prayers every day is I'm like, Lord, I always want to be concerned about you. Never let this be about us. You know, everything we do, you know, whether it's here or the devotionals 
or the Zoom classes we put together or, or, or the cabins we've been doing every month with different groups of people. I'm just like, Lord, you know, this is all for you. You know, you, this is all for you. I, I never want it to be about us, you know, and, and I truly believe in my heart a scripture where Jesus says, lift me up and I will draw all men unto me. Amen. So I'm like, Lord, because this, this is a prayer I remember telling him and before when he called me to preach, I was still in prison. I said, Lord, how am I going to get people to come? What am, I don't have a budget. I don't. I can buy a billboard. I can't buy flyers. I can't do the things these big churches do. Actually, when I got out, actually, I'm sorry, I wasn't in prison. I got out and I saw billboards. And it was crazy because the church name was small, but the pastor's face was huge on the billboard. And I'm like, that looks ridiculous. I'm like, that's, that's what I got to do to open a house of rest? And I remember taking it to prayer. You know, I'm like, God, I, I don't, what do I do? I don't even know how to start a church. I don't know how to do this. Like, do I need to gather thousands of dollars first? Do I need to get a billboard? Do I need to get a website? What do I do? And that's the verse that the Lord gave me. He says, lift me up and I will draw men unto me. And that's a beautiful thing because you know what it, who he's saying? He's saying, he's saying, you just, all your job is to do is exalt me. And he says, and I will draw men unto me. Amen. Door open stuff? I don't know. Mm. You know? So he's the one that draws people. Um, our job is, all your job is, is to exalt him. My job is to exalt him. That's it. Yeah, to stay focused on him. That's it. That's it. And he yeah. said, and he, so basically, Jesus is saying, I'll be the marketing team for this church. I got the perfect marketing team. Lift me up. Yeah. <laughs> And I will draw men unto everything, me. And everything falls into place. Everything, every situation, every circumstance, every finance, every... He sustains us in every single way, you know, emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, in, in, every, in every way, as long as we just stay focused on Him. Yeah. Yeah. All righty, guys, we're going to head home now. We're going to shut these lights down and um, get some rest. Yeah. God bless you. Good you know, have a blessed weekend. Uh, we'll see you Sunday. And, um, you know, be safe and, and spend time with your loved ones, with your family. If you don't have family near you, call them. You know, give them a call, you know. Um, and um, that's it, right? Absolutely. Bye. Hi guys, we love you guys. Have a blessed day. Drink that coffee. Yep. Tea, vanilla, whatever you want. Good night. I mean, good morning. Good night. <laughs> you you pulled a Sharon. Haha. <laughs> ha. All right guys, bye. Bye guys. <laughs>